When I was in the second grade, I remember asking my parents for a piano. And for reasons beyond me, I was drawn to the instrument. Perhaps it was watching Miss Gwen Toole from Gilmer, Texas, play the piano while my mom and my uncle sang old gospel hymns. Maybe it was hearing a piano solo before the bridge of my favorite country and western song that got me going. Possibly it was the beauty of the instrument's presence that I was drawn to when I saw one in my neighbor's house or at church. Whatever the reasons, I knew within my soul that the piano was the instrument for me. Seeing I was earnest in asking for a piano, my parents eventually found one. It was an old upright piano that fit nicely into the corner of our living room there in Kilgore, Texas at the time. When it arrived, I was so excited to finally have what had only been a longing weeks, months before. Then an existential reality hit me. Mom, I said in my second grade voice, I love the piano, thanks, but I don't know how to play it. Of course you don't know how to play it, silly, my mom said. That's why we got you a teacher. You'll begin lessons next week. Well, for the past several weeks, our gospel lessons have been like that piano to me. I'm drawn to Jesus' words and feel compelled to act upon them, but I'm not so sure I know how. A few weeks ago, you'll remember Jesus told us a story about a vineyard owner who paid the same wages to those who began at daybreak, as well as those who started right before dusk. It was a lesson compelling all of us to readjust our sense of fairness. I don't know how to do that. Then Jesus told a story about being invited to a wedding banquet and asked all of us to be prepared to come to the party without telling us when the party was. I don't know how to do that. And then last week, he gave us a lesson with a picture. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God's what is God's. Well, how can you tell the difference? I don't know how to do that. And then finally today, he gives us the two greatest commandments. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And the second one is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I don't know how to do that. This year has been a year of unknowns. We've never been here before. We've been flying blind. We don't know where we're going. We don't know when the fires in the West the hurricanes in the Gulf, much, and not to mention the world's pandemic, will end. We don't know how to do that. I believe when we're honest enough to admit this, to admit our helplessness, that God takes our humility, our helplessness, our fear, our anxieties, and works with it, and works through it. We need a deliverer because the Lord knows we can't deliver ourselves. We require that proverbial piano teacher because our hearts and our souls and our minds are inexpressibly drawn to the truth, to the beauty and to the goodness of the one who is at once teacher and savior. When we admit that we don't know what we're doing, I believe God steps in and shows us. God shows us what fairness looks like. God shows us what belongs to God and what should be left to Caesar. God shows us how to love God and self and neighbor. Even while we're learning those musical scales, God inspires us by playing Mozart along the way. Today begins St. Julian's official kickoff to the season of stewardship. It's traditionally a time when we share stories, we turn in pledge cards, and we eat good food together. 
But this year, it must be said, I don't know how to do that. How can we share sacred stories when our holy space is still closed? How can we turn in pledge cards when we can't pass the offering plate? How can we eat good food together when gathering in mass endangers our physical health? I don't know how to do that. You see, when these realities are named and humility is laid bare, God comes in and reminds us of God's very self. Listen, this year's stewardship meditation is sharing the grace within by living out of God's abundance. Sharing the grace within by living out of God's abundance. Not only does God step in when we confess, I don't know how to do that, but Christ's body, his church, you, do the same. I don't know how to be fair, but St. Chrysostom knew how when he taught that if you have two coats in your closet, one belongs to you and the other one belongs to your neighbor in need. I don't know when the wedding banquet will be. But St. Augustine taught that our hearts are restless until they rest in God. Well, perhaps being restless is accepting the wedding invitation. I don't know how to tell what belongs to God versus what belongs to Caesar, but St. Joan of Arc died with the King of Kings upon her lips, King of Kings' name upon her lips. I sometimes don't know how to love myself but my spouse and my children remind me how. I sometimes don't know how to love my neighbor, but the stories you share with me about how you love inspires me to keep trying. I sometimes don't know how to love God, but when I open up my prayer book with you and pray the words that we all have prayed so many times before, I'm reminded how, reminded how to share the grace within by living out of God's abundance. I don't know always how to do that, but I have friends of God that do. It must be said that this year's stewardship season will look different and feel different, but the spirit of that season and of this season remains in the stories of grace we continue to share while remembering our frailty up and against the abundance of God. It must also be said that All Saints Day, Christ the King Sunday, Advent, and yes, even Christmas will not be celebrated within our sacred space that we love and that we miss dearly. However, and even though we've never been here before, and even though I don't know how to do that, God does. God does, because God is remembered when we are at our lowest and his grace flows in at its highest. God is then recognized as the God of abundance instead of a God of scarcity. Perhaps our prayer posture as we finish out this unprecedented year is to admit that we don't know how to do any of this. But like a good piano teacher, Jesus inspires us to play Mozart, even as we are just beginning to learn our musical scales. So question, do you know how to share the grace within by living out of God's abundance? It's okay to admit that you don't, because I may know a few friends in both high and low places that can show us all the way. And God bless you.